Welcome to Make a Break Society's video on upgrading the power back of the Sega Game Gear. Footage of this process totaled just over two hours, so I've decided to break this up into three parts. This is part two, covering soldering and testing of the internal electronics. You can find links to parts one and three down in the description and at the end of this video. Now with that out of the way, let's get into it. So like I said, we're gonna just cut the connectors off. Now well, I've got them stripped, I'm gonna check each of the voltages. Doesn't matter if they're, as long as they've got something in them. 4.6, that's perfect. This one. Three point eight, it's a little lower than the other one, but still perfectly acceptable. Like I said, one of the batteries gets put on positive. I've used these before when you solder to them. These pads like to lift up. It's a pain in the butt. I just do my best to try and keep them down. There we go. Well, we're in here and it's easy to do. I'm going to solder on our connector. The batteries aren't on here, it's a little bit easier to do this one. Get enough on there to make it nice and stable. And then I like to heat the connector back up and just push the cable in a little bit further so it sits flush on the other side. Like that. And we can set it up our batteries. This one's battery plus. And this one's battery minus. And then I'm going to grab this just so I can get a good layout idea. I think. solder them on, wiggle it around later. These two batteries get connected together. And that connection gets soldered here. Use some double-sided tape or possibly glue. I try not to use glue when I can. So probably some double-sided tape to stick all this down in place. And this connector plugs into here. And 
it should actually be it. And that's enough right there for us to do a test. So I'm going to pull it out of this. And let's do a test. Oh right, that's right, I've used these before. So with these battery management units, they don't, like nothing is energized until after you plug them in, like plug them into charge for even just a second. And then it will start functioning like it's supposed to. But it doesn't until you do that. So, actually before we even do that, Set this aside for a second. And let's take a look. You'll see here we won't be showing anything on the power out. But if we look at the battery, oh, come on, if I can actually get on it properly. I'm barely on, I'm not on it properly because it's not showing a consistent value. It shouldn't be all over the place like that. Right, well, let's energize it first. Give it a couple of seconds. Plug it, we should see proper voltage come out of these pins. Yeah, showing still showing quite low, although it's building up. The circuit is probably trying to balance these batteries right now. Seven point five. What were our batteries at? Well, that's about right for the total voltage between the two of them. Alright, so now for the quick and dirty test, we'll actually charge these things up fully before we do anything. And there we go. Dodge cable again. Interesting that it's bouncing all over the place like that. But again, it might still be, like it's going to be trying to balance those for a while. And basically what it's doing is like, oh, wait, one of them's higher voltage, one of them's lower voltage, and it's draining back some of that voltage into the other one until they equal out at about the same. But that seems to be working. So now I'm going to do a full charge on them overnight tonight. And we'll check back in the morning. So before I let you go, let's see what we're getting from the charger. The charger is pushing us exactly eight stuff. So we are providing power to it properly. Alright, we're gonna leave it on the bench like this and we'll take a look back in the morning. Here we are now after a full night of charging, and it seems to kind of hover in the anywhere from 8.3 to 8.35. Um, it I will show you what it stabilizes the batteries out to. The batteries have stabilized out to 8.32. When I plug it back in, it'll bounce back up and then it'll drop itself back down. This is probably how it's coming straight out of the uh, game gear or the power backs control board and that's perfectly fine. Anything below what 8.5 not uh, anything between 8.2 and 8.5 is what I would want to see. So 8.2 would give a battery voltage of 4.1 on each of them. Uh, so this gives where we're at right now, this gives us 
one six, which is perfectly fine. 4.2 would be considered fully charged on these guys. So now we're gonna try to do our discharge test. Uh, discharge test is going to basically, uh, basically what I'm gonna see is at what point this cuts out or this cuts them out. I don't want them to get too low. For packs like these, uh, 2.5 is pushing it. I, you, you really shouldn't go that low. Three volts should be your your end cutoff. But 2.5 is technically safe. I don't want to go that low. So let's see where this cuts it off. It should cut it off based on the specs of this board. It should cut it off at about 3.2 volts, which is a little higher than I would like, but I'd rather safe than sorry. So that's our next test. I'm going to unplug this. Uh, if you notice too, I have connected this board in with alligator clips to my uh, multimeter just so I can leave it sit there. two hour and 15-ish minute mark. 609, and we're sitting at 7.5 volts. Well, based on that, we're probably gonna get, I'd say about five hours on this. Uh, more importantly, it's time for me to leave the office and uh, go home. So I'm going to just let this run all night and we'll see what our voltages are in the morning. Uh, I ended up staying at the office just a little bit later than I expected. Um, and yeah, it took me a little bit to get everything set back up. I restarted blinking at uh, 7.1 volts. And it is now 7.06. So that gives us three, just a little over three hours, three hours, 15 minutes, give or take. So we get to the low battery warning. Now I'm actually leaving where I put my jacket on and we'll see where we're at in the morning. Here we go again. So this is the uh, uh, voltage I came into which is pretty much what I left at. So let's turn it back on. I flipped it off as soon as I got here so I have a chance. So with a draw on it, we're at 6.94. And I'm just gonna leave it like this and let the video play until uh, we see what its actual cutoff voltage is. I'm going to have to go back. I wasn't sitting here. Um, I'm going to have to go back and look at what it actually died out at because that number is slowly but surely going up now that there's no draw on it. But this is perfect. And to deal with that cord, we are using this old power cord that I have. Uh, I will leave links to the right barrel jack in the description if you want to make your own cord. The downside to using this is that uh, I'm going to lose this, which means I'm not going to have proper strain relief through the hole. So I'm probably just going to tie two knots in this so it kind of catches on both sides. But either way, I will be keeping this cable too, just in case I ever want to restore it exactly. Because you know, if you turn it just into the right position, it does work. So I mean. I may just leave it for that. Yeah, I'm gonna clean up this stuff and we'll get started on it. Yeah, workspace is cleaned up a little bit. So I got the uh, the power adapter that I was gonna use wrong. I went and grabbed this one. 
I'm checked and then I that's the one I want. So I'm going to set that aside so I don't accidentally use it. This is the one we'll be using. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder this guy. It does show the polarity on here. I can see that it's minus on this. No. Minus on this side, and on the other side it's plus. So we're going to do side of this one. White stripe is on plus. This is a center positive barrel jet. So once we get it all hooked up, we're going to test it with multimeter. We'll plug it in and check and make just to be 100% sure that we are doing center positive here. than I need because I'm going to have to tie those two knots in there. And that's the exact amount I need so I'm going to cut it off to about here. Side cutters are definitely the, the standard go-to that people use for this kind of stuff, but uh, years ago, when I was working for frivolous engineering, I realized that uh, nail clippers are actually really, really good for it. So instead of side cutters, I never ended up buying a pair. I just always used nail clippers. So there's always a pair of nail clippers in the kit. to the board. the double knot with my smooch line in the middle there. Oh yeah, so I do understand that this isn't the most elegant solution, but it is a solution that'll do the job. If I can kind of get my hands on uh, an actual replacement cable, or if I find another one that has kind of that same, that same string relief piece if it happens to fit. I mean, that's going to be a tall order, but if I get my hands on it, I'll go that way. Just to show you how this is going to work. should leave the board pretty much in place as well. And after that, the next thing we do is we test the cable. So we want to make absolutely sure that the cable is passing through properly. Even though there is no battery connected here, it doesn't matter. 
this supposed to work? Issues. So we're good there. Alright, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, until next time, doesn't matter if you make or break, as long as you're having fun.